Welcome back. It's a big setback to the Kerala government. The Kerala High Court has cancelled the appointment of Dr. Priya Varghese as Associate Professor at the Karnur University. She is the wife of the Chief Minister's Private Secretary, K.K. Ragesh. While wrapping the Karnur University, the High Court said that Priya Varghese does not possess sufficient teaching experience as mandated by the University Grants Commission. The Kerala High Court has ordered a re-examination of her appointment and said that the, no university is above the rules and regulations laid out by the UGC. Now, with this development, the big question that's being raised by the opposition is, is the Kerala government, the CPM-led government, trying to make backdoor entries for its people in government jobs? News that's coming in. Kerala Governor Arif Mohammad Khan has now approved the cabinet's recommendation to call a special assembly session on the 5th of December. One of the legislations that will be taken up during this uh, session of the assembly is to remove the governor as chancellor of all universities in the state. Now, uh, whether or not opposition parties will back that in light of today's High Court decision, we'll have to wait and see. But the governor has given the go ahead for that assembly session to be called from the 5th of December. Let me now bring in our guest, Dr. Shama Mohammed, this Congress spokesperson. We'll be joined by Tom Varakan of the BJP. Ram Swami Mayapan is an advocate and Vivek Srivastava, political analyst. Uh, Vivek Srivastava, since uh, you'll be speaking for the left parties, uh, just tell me, today the High Court was absolutely scathing, uh, saying that the person concerned, Dr. Priya Varghese, does not have the sufficient teaching experience and that uh, no university or government is above UGC norms and rules. So therefore... Mm -hmm. Uh, it is it is asking the uh, uh, the state to put on hold the appointment of Dr. Priya Varghese. If you remember, oh. this is the first yes. case from mm -hmm. where this entire controversy started, where the governor said uh, this is a case of nepotism. Now the governor has been vindicated. Yes. Yeah. See, I mean, I will not uh, say that the governor has been vindicated. There are two ways of looking at it, and one is that the honorary court has uh, uh, sort of. Uh, you know, it has quoted what the actual rules are and how the rules should be followed. However, one problem that we are having at the ground level is that the Bharatiya Janata Party and the governors, that which, which was appointed in the various opposition rule states, I mean, they are, they, they are misusing the power, they are acting as agents of the government in the various departments, and education is one of them. The RSS has got no, but an agenda. Today, to today what the High Court has said, uh, Mr. Srivastava, yes. sort of echoes what the yes. governor's concerns were. How can you say no, that he's see, still acting as an agent of the BJP? He's been proven no, right see, by the High Court today. No, see, I mean, there are, there are, now there are two things to it. Now, first of all, I mean, we have a constitution, we have some rules in the written, we have a UGC and we have some norms. That is the first part. But the second part, which we are very concerned about, the left parties over here are, it is not that we, don't, we, we want to go somewhere against the norms of the UGC. There is a massive misuse of these norms being done by the Bharatiya Janata Party. The RSS has its own agenda regarding the education, the rewriting of the history, you okay. know, changing the curriculum of textbooks, and the chancellor is playing into the hands of the BJP. As so the I understand, HR, and I could be wrong, Dr. Priya Varghese's yes. qualification is in teaching Malayalam literature. I don't know how that perhaps, construes, perhaps, how that perhaps, construes perhaps. Uh, rewriting textbooks or, uh, or rewriting history. But anyway, Tom Vadakan respond to that. The governor is acting as an agent of the sender. And of the RSS, uh, this is basically to rewrite history textbooks. This is your education agenda. That's what he is uh, furthering in the in the state, holding a constitutional office. Very interesting. Uh, there's a gentleman called Joseph Sakaria. It was he who has challenged it in the court, and apparently he is the affected party. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying I'm not I'm not comparing Priya Varghese with the teach uh, with the quality of teaching. It is about teaching experience. Now, and uh, the UGC has been impleted in this, and the UGC's case is very clear. This is not about the governor. This is about the UGC regulations that run across the country, and the whole exercise is you need uh, Zaka. You need eight years to qualify. From an assistant, from a uh, associate, uh, from a junior level to an associate professor. Now her contention is that as director, student services or what she uh, has uh, 
that kind of teaching experience. Whereas that is not counted as teaching experience. Her second count is that, well, you know, she did a PhD. She went to leave for PhD and that period should be counted. But the reality is you, if, uh, if you're doing your PhD or your research, you need to do simultaneously carry on with research experience. I'm not questioning, questioning the integrity or the quality of teachers, but that is the regulation we all follow across the country. No, but Tom, so, that may be the, applicable in one case, and obviously you've been vindicated by what the High Court has said today, but what about the other 11 uh, cases? Surely yes. not all of them lack teaching experience. It is not, uh, the, each issue is, I mean, this is a case of apples and oranges. It's not a question of, uh, comparing the vice chancellor's appointment, um, that way the Kannur vice chancellor's appointment can also be questioned because it was the syndicate that promoted him and quid pro quo he wanted. Uh, they wanted Varghese appointed. Okay. So let's not go into that path. That are questions that have to be separately uh, investigated. The names that should have come should have been three names, which is the statutory requirement. Yeah. Instead, of one name was put out before the governor. And uh, this uh, selection process okay. was followed. Let me ask Shama Mohammed. The Congress party seemingly is caught between a rock and a hard place on this issue. On the one hand, uh, the left has been going hammer and tongs against the governor. You've also been saying things against the governor, but uh, you've not taken out any uh, uh, morchas or rallies against the governor. At the same time, you can't be seen as being soft on the left government and on Pindarai Vijayan. Where do you stand on this issue? No, we are very clear on our stand, Zaka. Here is a game between the two. Let me explain how the game is played. First and foremost, of course, Ms. Uh, Tom has mentioned all the things about this particular lady, Priya Varghese. It's, it's also from being from an assistant professor to associate professor, where you need eight years experience. The fact is that, like he said, in NSS, she, that cannot be taken as teaching experience. And also when she did a PhD, it is, uh, she did not teach during that time. You have to mm -hmm. teach. So her issue was that she basically did not have an experience to be there. And of course, we all know that she's the private secretary of Mr. Pinarai Vijayan's wife, KK Rajas, Ragesh's wife. So there is definitely nepotism. Now, let's look at the other cases of this. Rigi John, the vice chancellor of the Fisheries and Ocean University, has been removed by the High Court. Before that, the Supreme Court annulled the vice chancellor of the Abdul Kalam Technological University. What did the Supreme Court say? According to UGC norms, three names has to be given to the governor. Okay, but only one name was given, and that's why the uh, that's why it happened. But my question today is: when all these vice chancellors were appointed, when all this uh, this particular Riji John, the Techno Abdul Kalam uh, Abdul Kalam Technological University vice chancellor, when he saw one name at that point, the governor, why did he sign? He could have said, "Listen." I need to see three names. Why are you not giving me three names? Why only one name? Because at that point, the association between the two, the Bhatia Janta Party and the CPM were very, very, there was a bond homie between the two. No, now, no. The governor has because... taken uh, an antithetical position when it came to the gold scam. He has been saying things against uh, this government even before this yeah. whole VC's row came. I think the yeah. VC's row, he put on hold all the other 11 universities because citing the precedent uh, put out by the Supreme Court in the technical university case, where the Supreme Court said, why aren't you following the norm of uh, forwarding three names? That's, that's it's I, thereafter that's I, that the governor did that. I, I don't think that, you can attribute motives to that. No, no. When, when initially they gave him the names, the, instead of giving three names, they gave him one name. The governor did not say a word. He has signed all these 11 yes, vice yes, chancellors. Let's understand that. He did not say a word at that point of time. Yes. On the yes. No, but the court staff, had not ruled at that time, point. Shama. The court had not ruled at that time. The technical university this, verdict no, had no, not come at, come I, at that no, time. What I'm, you're not listening to what I'm trying to say. I know the court has not ruled at that time, but the governor knows as a governor, he's the chancellor also. Let's not okay. forget that. Not so he knows at that point of time that the UGC norms are that three names have to come. He only saw one name at that point of time. He did not say a word. On the CPM side... What they are doing is they are just putting their people everywhere. And let's also not forget what happened to the Trivandrum mayor. She wrote a letter in the health sector of the corporation. Get, uh, get me the names of our people. I would, you know, that's what she said. She wrote in the letter, get me the names. So this is happening all over the Kerala. Once Pinarai Vijayan has come in, he has started putting only CPM. You have to be a CPM person, a vice but, chancellor. Uh, Dr. Shama Mohammed, to be fair, I mean, when the UDF was in power, you guys were putting your people. I mean, no, when no, the no, LDF no. is These in power, they are actually, putting their people. I don't, th I don't think nepotism is confined to one political party in this country, surely. 
But let me let me let me ask Ram Swami Mayapan. No, no, let me ask Ram Swami Mayapan now. Now I want to know what is going to happen because the the government is bringing in this bill, removing the governor as chancellor of all universities. Ah, they are saying that the governor's appointment as chancellor is by an act by the state legislature. Surely, if there is unanimity in the state legislature to change that act and to remove the governor. Then the legislature prevails. The governor, after all, is a constitutional office. He's not above the state legislature for sure. Uh, Zaka, we'll have to look at two things. One, I don't think uh, the bill envisages the entire state legislature having owners over choosing the vice chancellor. They have designed a mechanism whereby the legislature or members of the legislature will have an advantage. That only means the ruling party will have an uh, upper hand in deciding the matter. I don't think the entire legislature unanimously or members of the legislature get a vote on it per se. I think it's the committee through the Senate that will propose the three names that will still come to the cabinet committee, the equivalent that will decide, or it may end up being just a higher education minister and not necessarily other members of the legislature as the present form of the bill goes. So the other members of the legislature do not have a say anyway. No, no, it's what? a it's a bill that's so, going to be brought to the floor of the assembly. It's going to be voted upon in the floor of the assembly. Uh, yes, but if you look at exempt clauses that are provided, the exempt clauses still provide for preference to the cabinet committee, preference to the um, higher education minister. Only after their decision and after that committee goes through, then the legislature has a say. No, so there's been a precedent the in this Ramaswamy Mayapan in Bengal. Mamta Banerjee, if you remember, uh, when Jagdeep Dankar was uh, the uh, the governor there. Uh, they brought in a bill, and the bill got passed, uh, removing the ch uh, removing the governor's okay. chancellor. I'm not opposed to the bill. At the end of the day, if the bill finds master with the legislature, the governor only has two options. He can send it back for reference, raising a few legal issues sure. and other notices. That privately will have to be looked at by the cabinet. And if there is any revision, placed before the legislature, and then again sent back to the governor. No, so the governor I, I also want to ask Vivek Srivastava. Surely the governor can say that. Look, I've had now one ruling by the Supreme Court. And two rulings yes. by the High Court in Kerala. So yes. pending, you know, <laughs> pending that, how can you decide upon this bill, even if the bill passes muster in the in the state legislature, Vivek Srivastava? No, see, they are they are, they are unconnected things, and the and, and Are the how are they unconnected? The governor, <laughs> I'll tell you how they are unconnected. The governor has been an errant, uh, an irritant for the for the governors for a long time, not only in this particular issue. He did accept the eleven names firstly and did not raise any uh, any issue in the matter because three names which the state government has to give. I mean, basically, this facility has been given. So, just in case the governor has some issues on one particular name, there are two other options left. However, in this particular case, he accepted all the eleven names as it is and approved the appointments. That's the first part. The second part is, however, he was interfering time and again in the various processes of functioning of the government. No, no, so that is, is a there, separate and, matter. And, and, you know, that's yes, not the subject so, matter of the debate. You know, I'm asking you yes. a very simple mm -hmm. question. You are bringing yes. a law or a bill to remove the governor as chancellor of all universities yes. in the state. The governor yes. can legitimately yes. turn around and say that, look, there is one yes. Supreme Court order and two High Court orders which have removed yes. vice chancellors that you recommended me to appoint. How can you okay. bring in this bill? No, see, now the legislature, the legislature is not bound by the judiciary. They are two different domains and they are two, two different pillars of the democracy. The judiciary cannot interfere in the working of the legislature and vice versa. So, if the legislature does have the adequate majority and the bill is passed, no, no, the, the, the judiciary the surely can. I mean, this is this is the principle of our uh, of our uh, democracy yes, that the judiciary yes. surely can strike down laws uh, if it finds certain laws passed by parliament or by state legislatures is unconstitutional. Surely, it can strike it down. But anyway, that, that, that's besides the point. I want to ask Shama Mohammed. I'm not asking Tom this because Tom's party does not have any legislators in the assembly. What about your legislators? What are you going to do? Will you vote for this bill? We give me, will see give when me a it clear comes answer. Into the assembly, what we will do, you will see when we come into no, it. No, I'll know. That everybody will know, no, Shama. It'll come on TV. You'll also know. I'll also know. I'm yeah, asking so, you now, no, what will you do? But I'm, I'm telling very clearly here, there are two issues. One, of course, the overreach of the Pinarai Vijayan government, and also a governor which keeps on coming every day on television. Shama, giving make sermons. your position I mean, clear governor, tonight. When this bill comes governor, to remove the governor, when, what will be the UDF's position? The governor, the governor is interfering too much, and there is the issue of the governor interfering over here. The governor the other day told, I do not want Media One and Kairali TV to attend yeah, this that. press conference. I mean, 
what is what is happening it's a democracy anybody any press like you okay. you're from the press anybody has the right to go to a press conference okay, and so you I'm must guessing have seen that the congress party and the udf will so, vote for this bill if the bill is brought uh, well, in the assembly well i said you must you must okay no no fair enough that's the inference i mean surely i can i can draw an inference let the bill be tabled no let, let me ask uh, tom wadakan tom wadakan you don't have any members in the state uh, legislature if this is going to be passed either with the support of the urf or without the support of the urf because you know the the ldf does not need the urf support to pass this bill then game over the governor will be removed and there is the precedent of what happened in bengal well uh, we uh, this is an uh, evolving process let us watch and uh, see what the governor is to say about it we are not people who can judge uh, what the governor's next move would be on this issue so let's wait and see i think i think that is more uh, correct because we as a party do not interfere in constitutional heads let them take a call on what uh, what he thinks is right and we'll stand by whatever is the constitutional norm and but tom tell me something about if it. this bill is yeah. brought forth and both ldf and udf unanimously vote to remove the governor then you don't have legs to stand on the story politically speaking it it is not an issue about uh, it is not a political ego issue here what we have here is a situation which is to be nationally followed if you are breaking norms in kerala this can happen in other states too and if that continues you do not need an organization like the university grants commission okay. and then you will see the exodus of students going out of kerala and the final person who will suffer will be the students and that is the reality so the so i'll give ram sawmi mayapan the it. the final word we have seen this in bengal we're seeing this in kerala and i guess this is this must be true in other states as well where depending on whichever political dispensation is in power they appoint quote unquote their people into important positions in educational institutions uh i think that is the moot point education has become politicized in most states in this country where this is again seen as the fish and loaves of office are hamari party aayi hai to hame naukri mil jayegi that is that is the the crux of the matter as far as this debate is concerned the, the entire pretext and the entire basis for how our education institutions are governed and how our constitution has an overarching mechanism that takes care of all this is that there is checks and balances at every stage of someone having power that checks and balances provided by the governor being the vice chancellor of uh, being the chancellor or the pro chancellor mm. and having some decision making role and questioning the authority of the legislature when a recommendation is made and that if taken away or if the syndicate has autonomy or if the legislature has autonomy and there are no checks and balances that are to be questioned the punch no, the law works by precedent came... tomorrow if this gets challenged in court assuming the bill gets passed uh, and it gets challenged in court surely the kerala government can turn around and say that look it's it's there in bengal what is applicable in bengal so, can surely be applicable in kerala that. and it is not only about one state i think there are multiple states even the states like gujarat have it and Correct. panchi commission in 2010 made a recommendation to the parliament as to how the roles of the governor vis-a-vis -vis the appointment of other vice chancellors and him being the pro chancellor may have to be modified given the roles are changing from 1947 to 1950 and yeah. 1950 to today so that being the case i don't think anyone is going to question this being taken away from the governor and the governor himself is not going to question that but i think the question is of checks and balances okay. what the kerala government is trying to do whereas the other state laws have not done so is removing the checks and balances here the checks and balances remain within the legislature the senate committee and the appointment of the senate committee will also fall within the legislature and the appointment of the vice chancellor will also go to the legislature and the pro chancellor will also be from within the legislature so the checks and balances from the same institution of democracy is where the question is we have four pillars for the democracy all right including so, so let me ask vivek shrivastava yes. the, the the final word so tomorrow if in any of yeah. these universities there is a corruption <laughs> case or there is there is something that that is fishy that comes up then surely if uh, mlas and people who owe allegiance to mlas are the ones who are running that institution without any checks and balances as ram swami mayapan said then how how is any of this co going to come to light there is no independent person going to uh, you know scrutinize what's going on no i don't uh, no i don't understand what relation your question has with this governor the governor it is not under the jurisdiction of the governor anyway if you have an, an accountability bureau or the corruption bureau or the narcotics control bureau or any bureau Uh, which is taking care of law and order situation, including the state police, that has to be managed by the state government itself. Now, in this particular case, if the BJP Home Ministry, why are the governor starts interfering okay. in the functioning of the state government? 
the government has to hit back. No, no. So and ultimately, it's, it's going to be a case states. of political versus legal. The governor is well within his right now that he can show uh, two high court orders and one Supreme Court order saying that uh, recommendations of vice chancellors and other teachers made to him by the government uh, have now been put on hold or have been quashed. That, that is uh, more we, let's I mean, let's I, see I, let's see how this plays out. But ultimately, the political aspect is also important. The bill will come. And likely the bill may get passed uh, unanimously as well in the assembly. I'm going to uh, wrap up the show. Thanks very much for tuning in. In a moment, uh, Mario Shakil joining you with News Epicenter. Thanks for your time.